All right, hey folks. Just a couple quick little demos here. In this video, we're going to show you, or I say we, it's me, hey. Um, <laughs> I'm going to discuss in this video how to color black and white TIFF images in InDesign. And there's a few different options you can play with on this. So real quickly, I've got this image of the Empire State Building that I have downloaded from the internet. It is not mine, uh, but it'll work perfectly for this demonstration. Obviously, I pulled this image from the internet. It's likely RGB. I tried to pull a fairly large large res image, but it's still probably, no, oh, this one, this was 180. How unusual. Either way, no big deal. For this demo, we're talking about color. We've already had the discussion in class about resolution, needing it to be 300 dpi. That's your goal. But yes, simply to convert this image to grayscale is a very easy one-step process. When the image is open, I can simply go up to image, mode, and grayscale. You will notice on mine, I'll go ahead and select this grayscale. It automatically did it for me here in Photoshop. I've turned that alert message off. You might receive an alert message on yours that says, are you sure you really want to do this? And you say, yes, I do. Okay, just do it. Click OK, and boom, you're here at grayscale. Now, in order for this image to be able to be colored in InDesign, we need to save it as a black and white TIFF. So go ahead at this point, go to File, Save As, or Command-Shift-S for those that like quick keys. And in the very next pop-up window, name it whatever you want, save it wherever you want. From this instance, I'm just going to do it right to the desktop. But make sure, again, the format changes to TIFF. That is our goal. You need a TIFF file. Yes, I am showing you these instructions here in Adobe CS6, but these are the same standard instructions that happen in CS5, in Creative Cloud. No worries, most of these demos that we're dealing with have not changed at all over the last several, several versions of Creative Suite. So, I've got my file. I'm saving it as a TIFF. I'll go ahead and leave defaults. The color.gain is fine. Hit save. It'll bring up another pop-up menu. And again, very likely if you're working on Apple, any of the Apple hardware, all the defaults are fine. What I would recommend just to make sure is that if it is offering layer compression and it's leaving it at RLE or a zip, go ahead and change it to discard layers and save a copy. We just need one single flat, single layer TIFF. That's all we need. And I'll hit OK. It won't look like anything has changed other than the file name and the tab up here, but I can go ahead and close that. Close out of Photoshop for a second, and there we see over here on my file list the new black and white TIFF file. So let's jump over to InDesign real quick. And let's go ahead and make a new file. Oh, I guess I don't have to make a new one. Sorry, I did leave one open already. Got an open blank page to grab your image and place it in here. Easiest thing is either go to File, go to Place, or again, for those that like quick keys, you should really get used to knowing the quick key of command D to help place any image. That'll bring up the pop-up window asking me to track down what photo I want. I know it's saved as Empire State Building TIFF. I don't necessarily need to wait for the preview, but while I'm yapping, there it is. Haha. -ha. So I'll hit open. It'll now give me a little icon, give me a chance to, with a little preview of the image, but also wherever I click, that's going to be the upper left corner of where the photo exists. There it is. And just for kicks real quick, I do want to scale it up larger so we can really see. You can scale up both the frame and the image simultaneously by holding down the command and shift keys together. And what that does is by holding the um, shift key, it's scaling it proportionally. By holding down the command key with the shift key, that's me telling InDesign to scale up both container and image together as one. Yeah, it does look a little pixelated, probably because here in InDesign, I've got it set to just average image showing. One quick trick I can tell you right now is if I deselect the image and just have the mouse floating somewhere else on screen, if I right click, it'll give me a quick pop-up menu for display performance. And I can instantly switch from typical, which is the default display option, to high quality display. And if you notice there, it cleaned up the image right away. It shows it more at a better resolution, closer to what it actually is. 
Um, it still might be a little pixelated because, again, I didn't convert this to 300 DPI because that's not the point of this demo. So either way, there we see it in a little bit of resolution. There are two things you can do to color this black and white image, TIFF file, and in InDesign. Number one, with the direct normal arrow, that black arrow that's in the toolkit over on the left side over here, if I click on the actual photo, you'll notice I get a blue outline. That's InDesign telling me I have the actual box selected. Not the photo, just the outside container. If right now I want to go ahead and click, change the color of the background of the photo, which is not technically the photo, it's actually again the box, make sure in the tool palette over here that I don't have outline in the front, I have the background. It actually calls it fill versus stroke. So make sure the fill box is in front and in my color palette, by default it's set to white. But if I use my color eyedropper here in the color palette, and if you have any trouble finding the color palette, remember all palettes are always listed under the window menu in pretty much every Adobe program that exists. So if you're not seeing the palette come under the window menu, it's all alphabetized. Color would be right here. Um, and you'll notice there's a check mark next to color and that's just InDesign telling me, hey, it's open dummy. It's already over there on the screen, go use it. So I will. But back to the matter at hand, I've got the window selected, not the actual photo. The background fill is up in the foreground of the two and I can eye drop any color. And you'll notice everywhere in the image as I keep changing and clicking a different color, everywhere that's the lightest in the photo or the white of the black and white photo suddenly fills in with that background color. And that's something you could use. That might be one way to color the image. For the moment, I'm going to put the eye drop back over here on the white and switch the photo back to a white background, like the container. Now we could actually change the color of the black in the black and white photo. This is done a little bit differently. I have to switch to the direct select arrow, which is that white arrow in the toolkit. Now if I come back over here and click directly on the photo, you'll notice it changes into the little hand icon, which is basically telling me I can click and grab and drag the photo inside the box. And I'm just going to Command Z to undo that. But you'll also notice the frame is not blue. It's kind of that off brownish color, at least by default, that should be the color. That's telling me the photo is selected right now and not the container. At this point, I can go back over to my color palette. It's a black and white photo. So at first it's going to show you just a black slider and that's fine. It's easy to change in that little upper right menu in the palette. Click on that and you should see an option for CMYK or RGB. Since we're working with digital printing, CMYK is what we want. Let's select that. Now I'm back to that same familiar menu. I can move the mouse over the color swatches down here. It changes into an eyedropper. And now if I click on colors, you notice it is changing the color of the photo. The, all the areas that are black ink are changing to a new color. So yeah, you could tell that this could get pretty trippy pretty quick if for some odd instance, I changed all the black ink to the red, in this case, this burgundy color. And if I go back to the main normal selection tool, the dark arrow, click back on the image. I might click away first, then click back on it. And then instead of letting the background be white, change it to black. So now I get a really very trippy, almost, uh, let's go back to the 70s kind of poster. Or it could be slightly a horror flick of some story in New York. But yeah, this is a really quick, easy way to color a photo in with a single color in InDesign. But it all relies back on you making sure that the original photo file itself is grayscale, not RGB, not CMYK, and that it's a TIFF. So, and again, for final output, 300 dpi, a little sidebar note for you, but grayscale TIFF file is the only way you can color these in quickly. We'll look in Photoshop directly for some other alternative coloring options, but that's it for today. Have fun. See, InDesign's not such a bad program. It can be your friend in simple, quick instances like this. It's okay. InDesign sometimes is our friend. All right, that's all. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks.